Good morning. Um, I just want to actually start by introducing you to Imogen, who is a 10-month-old koala joey at Symbio Wildlife Park, about 45 minutes th south of Sydney. Now, Symbio is a pretty small, um, small zoo there. Um, I'm just going to play you this short clip. <laughs> So Symbio approached Tourism Australia, the social media team, um, and sent that video in, um, which we saw and obviously loved, um, and posted on our Facebook, um, Facebook channel. Um, and that video promptly uh, received 95 million views. Um, with no paid spend behind it, um, it also received over 5 million likes and over a million shares. Following that, these guys got in touch with Symbio and featured it on their channels. The clip was actually shared globally across the TV news bulletins, 6pm news, news bulletins across the world. Um, and probably the, the biggest measure of success for a lot of people is that The Ellen Show also contacted Symbio and asked them to, um, to have a bit of a chat, share the video, a bit of a backstory. The question we regularly get off the back of that is, sure it did well, obviously, but how did it help the business? Can social media actually help drive business results? The good news for Symbio is that it had an incredible impact. As I say, 45 minutes south of Sydney, not a huge profile at the time. In the month following the release of that video, they had a 66% increase in visitation. They then started to produce a series of content pieces around animals in their wildlife park. And over the course of a year, they almost doubled visitation as a result of what they were doing on social media. Seriously impressive, um, even more so when I tell you that it was a zookeeper who was actually capturing all of this content. They weren't paying agencies, they weren't going out there and you know, having huge production budgets. Um, this was all captured by a zookeeper who had a bit of an interest in videography on the side and, uh, and went and, and did this for the, for the park. Symbio is just one of a number of tourism operators in Australia who are having really great success with what they are doing in the social media space. You know, a lot of people think it's too hard, uh, I'm not particularly social myself, I don't know where to start. Um, today I'm going to take you through five tricks that will show you how to do it more effectively without having to put a huge amount more effort into it, which will help you to start see results from, from your activity on social media. So the first of the, the tricks is probably something you, you've heard a lot around storytelling and telling great stories. I won't harp on this because a huge number of people uh, will talk to you about all the stats around social media, but this slide itself, one minute on the internet, over 800,000 people log into Facebook. Um, there are 64,000 hours of Netflix watched, 972,000 Tinder swipes uh, in any one minute on the internet. So the opportunity is huge. This is where your customers are. This is where your guests are um, or future potential guests. Um, and if you get it right, as Symbio has, um, there is a real opportunity there to do really, really great stuff. One of the challenges with social media, I guess, is that you are competing with a huge number of other brands um, trying to capture the attention of people in newsfeed. Facebook can serve up to 3,000 pieces of content in the newsfeed on any given day. So all the activity of your friends and your friends' friends' activity, the amount of time you actually spend on Facebook only allows Facebook to serve up to 400, generally speaking, in that newsfeed. So Facebook actually uses an algorithm which determines how relevant that content is likely to be for you. Um, and therefore, it's really important to create content that's going to be relevant to the audience, that's engaging, that people actually want to see in their feed. So your content continues to appear in people's feeds on Facebook and increasingly Instagram. It's not just brands you're competing with. You are also competing with all of those people's friends who are sharing wedding photos, they're sharing sunset shots from their holiday in Bali or the Great Ocean Road or wherever it may be. Um, and you're also competing with the dreaded baby spam. Whilst it is important to, um, you know, to, to, to see this as a great platform 
Um, one of the mistakes I see a lot of people make is they approach it as an advertising channel. We are a business and we are trying to advertise to people to come to visit our business. And really when you think about the types of things you're seeing on your own Facebook news feeds, it's these things up here that grab your attention, not the brands that are pushing um, you know, advertising type material into your news feed. And therefore it's really important to make sure that you have really organic, natural content that you're pushing into feed and really kind of change your mindset around what you're doing there. The great thing is, is that you can actually be capturing a whole bunch of this content on what's already in your pocket, which is your smartphone. You know, with, with the technological advances that have come along, the cameras that are actually within those phones, um, you don't need to be investing in amazing technology to capture video or photos. You can actually be capturing this stuff on something as simple as a smartphone, and we'll talk through some of the other technology you could invest in if you wanted to take it further. But actually, the majority of what we're sharing on Tourism Australia's social channels are taken on a smartphone and, and shared with Tourism Australia um, through the Sea Australia hashtag. And as mentioned, we're getting about 3,000 pieces of content a day coming in to Tourism Australia. And you, know, you can very quickly identify the really organic, natural, great images that you're seeing on screen versus some of those shots that are a bit overly polished, feel a little bit like a, a fly you might see um, put into your letterbox or you know, an out of home piece of um, creative that's all a little bit too polished and again, just won't work as well in social media. One of the other things you can do, so you get that content, you can capture it yourself. Also worth just checking the hashtag that people are using when they're visiting your business. You'll find that there are a lot of people who can take a really great photo who are probably tagging you in, uh, you know, in social media um, and also checking in to your, to your business as well. A really great place to start to see where, um, you know, see the types of things people are interested in and also see how great the content is that's already out there about your business. Once you've identified that, once you've got the content to post, um, one of the techniques that we use at Tourism Australia that works really well is actually um, fostering the community. So obviously we tag and credit everyone who shares their content with Tourism Australia, which we then push out to our audience. Um, but one of the other things we do that works really well is tagging the RTOs, the STOs, operators in the area to make sure that we're telling a broader story about what we're doing. And what you find if you're doing that is obviously you're giving giving some love to, to those um, accounts that uh, are very relevant in the case of what you're posting. But they start to notice you, they'll start doing the same for you and hopefully grow your footpr footprint um, in the social space by, by tagging you and, and sharing your content as well. And finally, um, in terms of what you're actually posting, what you're creating, it's really important to tell that backstory and it goes back to to this Symbio example. Imogen's story, great video, people are going to watch it, people are going to share it. But what Symbio then did is continue to tell Imogen's story. And they've now had over a billion views um, across all, all media um, with their content because they know it's popular, they've got a story. Imogen's a celebrity in her own right now and they've managed to continue telling, telling that story. They also identified a number of other animals that are in the, uh, in the zoo. They've got names, they've now got personalities on social and they've managed to find something the community is really interested in and they're telling that story on an ongoing basis. The thing with Symbio is they're not constantly posting random different posts and seeing what works. They know what works, they have a formula and it took them some time to find what that formula was but once you actually do that, strike, you know, strike some gold um, and it might not be at the 95 million um, reach mark or view mark um, but see what the community is responding well to. Um, you can start telling those stories and, and taking people on a bit of a journey. The great thing with social is it's really forgiving. Um, you can make a mistake, you can put up a post that no one likes, you can put up something that's that people might even criticise, hopefully they won't, but um, it's forgiving. So you can take risks, you can take chances with it. And the great thing is that we have all of this um, real-time feedback that we get across um, all social channels to see how things are actually working. Um, and I just wanted to point out, a lot of people do focus on the, what we call the vanity, vanity metrics. So how many people reached, how many reactions have you got, how many shares. Now, reach is a great measure for relevance and relevance score and seeing how, how things will actually continue to be pushed out into newsfeed. But there are biz more business-minded metrics that you can focus on as well. So one of the things we pay a lot of attention to is the post clicks. If you are trying to drive leads to your website, making sure that you're creating content that's driving people through to the website to find out more is really important and can help drive that business um, or drive your business further from there. The second, um, the second tip today is investing in video. So 
Again, you may have heard this, but it is all about video at the moment. 60% of mobile data in Australia in 2016 was used on video, and that is planned or expected to increase to 78% by 2021. A bit hard maybe to wrap your head around that. To put it simply, there are 5 million Australians watching a video on Facebook every single day. So the opportunity is huge. It is how people are consuming media these days. Um, and you know, it's really important that as a business, if you are playing in the social media space, that you're thinking about how video can actually fit into, um, into your content plan. Again, the great news is that you've got your smartphone, takes great video, very easy to, very easy to capture that video, so it's good to get, easy to get started in that, in that space. Facebook's really optimising towards video in newsfeed um, at the moment, and there are three formats that I just wanted to run you through quickly to get you thinking about uh, the types of video formats that you might use um, in, in your own marketing efforts. Um, and the first one is the 360 degree video. And I'll just give you an example of what that looks like here. You might be able to see the, the mouse on screen. Um, we just recorded this, but uh, the 360 degree video allows you to scroll around and, and actually look at a, a, an environment as the video plays in real time. Um, you've probably seen some of this in, in your news feed or you've seen these videos before. Great thing about 360 video is it gives people a really immersive experience of what they can, what they can experience there. So they can be taken on a journey, they might be going on a walk, they might be riding a bike and they can look at around at the surroundings, see something that catches their eye and follow that as they're going on that video. Um, and it's a really great way of demonstrating um, your product if it is uh, conducive to this type, of, um, this type of video. You can't capture this just with your smartphone, but you can pick up a 360 degree camera for about $300. So it is really affordable and uh, Facebook allows you to, you know, you can save that file down and Facebook allows you to upload that 360 degree format which will render like that in, um, in feed and people can watch it. So if your business is kind of conducive to this type of thing, it's a really quick, cheap, easy way of really lifting um, the quality of your video content. The second example is drone footage. Again, you've probably seen a fair bit of this. This is a very short example of um, drone footage at Cable Beach um, of the camels walking along, along the beach there in WA. And the great thing about drone footage is it really creates a, um, a unique perspective. Um, can pro it can provide a sense of scale of what you're doing and what, what your business offers. And often it's just really stunning uh, visual, visuals which will want people wanting to find out more, potentially clicking through to the page, seeing what else is there, or clicking through to the website. Again, it is pretty affordable if you want to take your video content to the next level. Drones cost as little as a few hundred dollars. If you want to get something that's um, of real quality, um, you know, an example might be the DJI Mavic Pro, which is a very small, lightweight, portable drone, which costs less than $1,500. Um, it has a whole bunch of features which should prevent you from crashing it. Um, although I know plenty of people who, who have still crashed their drones. But again, if your business is, um, you know, out and out, outdoors, there's a real sense of scale there. This is something that you might consider. We can create, regularly create video content um, that's going to resonate with your audience and really lift, um, lift what you're offering um, to the next level. And the final one is actually um, a lot more lo-fi than the other two, which is actually the use of Instagram stories. And Lauren Bath speaking later, and I'm sure she'll be talking a little bit about, little bit about this um, and, and in a lot, more, uh, a lot more detail. But Instagram stories, we found, is a great way of, of telling a story. We're seeing, you, for those of you who don't know, you upload um, still imagery or video um, and you have a number of frames. So you can have one frame or you can have 10 frames and they play them in sequence. So for us, we're finding it's a great way of actually telling a story from start to finish. Um, and we're actually seeing really strong retention rates here. So well over 50% um, of people who start watching our Instagram stories get to the last frame, which when compared to normal video in Facebook is a, is a really strong result. Um, the other challenge it helps us overcome is how to drive people to click through to a website on Instagram, which if you've used Instagram, you'll know that you can't put links within the captions of your Instagram images or video um, if you're uploading them normally. If you're using Instagram stories, you can actually swipe up um, on, on whichever frames you designate to have that link. 
and we're seeing thousands and thousands, obviously we've got a big audience, we're seeing thousands of um, clicks through to websites, up to 10% of people watching those are clicking through to the website. So a great way of driving website traffic from Instagram, um, which I know is a real bugbear for people who don't actually um, manage to drive that traffic from Instagram. So I'll just give you a bit of an example of what this looks like. So as you'll see, great imagery, but pretty low, pretty low quality in terms of um, how it's displayed. You can put copy on there. You can really start to tell that story. Uh, and then the beauty of it, swiping up at the end, um, allows people to go to the website, which, as I say, could show really great results for, for you and your business. The third area is understanding the platforms. So a stat that always blows my mind is that one in every three minutes spent on a mobile phone globally is spent on a Facebook-owned platform. So one in every three minutes is either on Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, or WhatsApp, which to me just blows my mind, um, just how much time people are spending within that, within that environment. So in that context, it's actually really important to, to understand, firstly, how to get the most out of that platform, uh, and then to stay on top of the changes that are being made. And, and anyone who uses Facebook will, knows it, will know it is a, is a pretty crazy platform at times. You probably don't know, but there were 26 changes made last month to the way the Facebook platform works. Um, you know, in one month, 26 changes, which if you're spending a lot of time in there using, uh, you know, using the platform to drive your business can be really frustrating um, if things suddenly start changing. You know, some of the, some of the big ones are up here. Uh, the, the, the big change that's probably affected most businesses recently is the inability to, when you put a link post up on Facebook, to change the image, change the headline, and change the, um, the subheading um, in a link post. You have to do that when you're actually creating the page. Um, really frustrating, but if you don't keep on top of these things, um, they can creep up on you, you, you know, plan a campaign or plan a post, and suddenly you realise you can't actually do that. If there's one URL you write down today, I would recommend writing down facebook.com slash business. Um, they provide great updates, um, case studies of small, medium, large businesses and how they're using the platform to get results. Uh, they'll, they'll update you on any changes that are coming through. And I guarantee if, you've had a if you're having a problem with the platform, someone else has had it as well. And uh, in most cases, I'll be answering a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the questions that you might be having about those challenges. A few other good ones, Twitter, business.twitter.com is another good one if, you, if you're spending time um, in Twitter. There is a training, social media training agency um, in Victoria, um, SMK, um, which puts out a really good newsletter, smk.co. Um, is their URL, you can sign up to the newsletter. So there's a lot, of, a lot of information, a lot of resources out there that help you stay on top of uh, what's going on in the social media world. If you check in once a fortnight, once a month, um, you'll be across any of the major changes and opportunities that come along. When looking at social, a lot of people, when they're writing their strategies, focus really on who their audience is. And a lot of people still have a focus on how many followers do I have? You know, how do we grow our followers? And we've kind of moved on from that a little bit in that Peter was saying, talking before about the ability to target people through digital platforms. The amount of information that Facebook has about everyone on that platform is quite extraordinary. And I don't want to bamboozle you with, uh, with too much information on one slide. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen so much information on one slide, actually. But this just gives you a bit of an example of some of the things that you can target um, people on Facebook with a, a little bit of spend um, in that platform. It's quite incredible, really, to think how much information they have about you. In the case of the Great Ocean Road and you know, operators here, you, know, you can have an always-on strategy where you're spending $10, $20 a day targeting people. And if I was going to set up a targeting strategy with my, with my post down here, you look at age, gender, nationality. If you have a lot of Chinese tourists, you could, you know, 
China's probably not a good example given they don't have Facebook, but Japanese tourists, you can focus on people who are, um, who are from Japan, you know, 18 to 30 if that's the target audience you're going after. Facebook knows when people are traveling because they open their app and suddenly they're no longer in Japan, they're in Australia. So they can, um, they can target people who are currently traveling. You can also target people based on where they've been. So people recently in this location, I think I selected Lawn, um, and I can target people who have been within 40 kilometers of lawn recently, so in the past few days, which if you're targeting people who are from Japan, who are traveling, an age, age, gender, nationality, you can start to see how you can really hone in on the types of people you're trying to target on Facebook with, with ads and with some messages about the, about the business you have and try to attract people to, to your business. You can also target expats and then another good one is budget or premium travellers. So if you're a high-end operation, you might be going after the, uh, the, the premium travellers. If it's more of a backpacker type um, activity, uh, really great to say I'm going after budget travellers and you're not wasting money hitting the news feeds of people who are less likely or entirely unlikely to go and visit your business. Fourth point is don't just tell a story, give a story to tell. So I was reading a statistic this morning, um, actually, that when people are making their holiday decisions, they visit um, 27 different websites in making that decision. Now, there are a whole bunch of statistics out there. That was the one I saw this morning. There is an opportunity not just to focus on your own social channels, but actually look at how you can use the broader, the broader network of, of people's own accounts, your partners, even the media, to help tell that story and, and drive awareness of your business. The first thing to do in this, in this case is actually trying to get your guests to share the story of your business to try to attract who are probably going to be like-minded people to, to come and visit. The example I've got up here is actually Sovereign Hill from Ballarat, which I know is not in the region, but they do a great job of creating Instagrammable or really shareable moments. If you look at, I think that's their feed over the past week or two, you know, there's a lot of interesting things going on, a lot of opportunities for people to jump in photos and, and share those photos, tagging Sovereign Hill on their, on their Instagram account or their Facebook account. Um, and really help drive awareness of that message amongst their micro-influence micro of followers um, themselves. Partners, um, this I think is a really, really simple win for, for everyone. So if there are people selling your product, you can be sure that they've got a social media account of their own. They may be stretched in terms of trying to capture this content. If you get into the habit of actually sending them imagery or video and um, some really short, sharp captions that explain exactly what your business is about, you can be pretty sure that they're going to start using that on their accounts as well, helping expand your footprint. Another trick is to you know, tag RDOs, STOs, Tourism Australia, so tagging Visit Great Ocean Road. You know, that account shares images from around Great Ocean Road from visitors um, and industry. So if you're not already doing it, I'd recommend you start tagging them in any images or video that you're posting so they can see it, take it, credit you, tell a little bit of a story about what your business is. The same goes with Visit Victoria and Sea Australia, which as I mentioned is Tourism Australia's handle. You know, start getting into the habit of tagging all of us if we see a great image. We really, you know, we, we exist to support industry so um, you know we see a great image um, even if it's not perfect we might even pick up you know for, particularly for industry pick up the phone and say hey we love this do you have uh, a, a series of images or could we get you to capture some video because we think there's a really interesting story to tell there consumers or your guests are another great kind of avenue for promoting promoting your brand again I talked about you know making sure it's simple for them but you know if they're having a good time encourage them to go on to TripAdvisor or Google reviews to to rate your experience or, or your business it's one of the first places mo many people look to determine what their what their plans are going to be and really easy in conversation to say hey guys I'd love it if you could just give us a review um, and if they've had a good time they're probably likely to do so the other tactic that I see work really well is if there is a spot or a few spots where everyone seems to be grabbing photos of themselves, um, you know, point it out to people and say, hey, this is a spot where you might want to get a photo and a lot of you are probably already doing it, but, you know, offer to take the phone off them, take the photo as you give the phone back, um, encourage them to tag you, um, tag you and the location that they're in um, on, their, on their social channels, again, helping expand the reach of, um, of, of your business across their channels. And finally, in terms of amplifying your content, the media is surprisingly an easier avenue to actually get, um, get your story up. Um, with online journalism, you know, constant churning of stories, fewer journalists, they are looking for great content with great media um, to go with it. Um, you have to start with a pretty decent story, um, so that's, that's probably the hardest part. But if you do have something that you think that a news.com.au might be interested in, 
these are the th these are the tips I would I would probably suggest. Firstly, start with getting photos and video, get different formats of content together. Um, create a simple fact sheet, so not just about the story you're trying to tell, but a little bit about your business. So it makes it really easy for that journalist to write the story. Some quotes, obviously, stories always have quotes, so you develop some quotes, include that in the email you're going to send, and then. Actually making contact, so picking up the phone and, and calling a journalist and saying, hey, we've got what we think is a really interesting story. Are you interested? If they say yes, say we were going to post, you know, you might say we were going to post it on our social media channels tomorrow, but we'd be happy to hold off if you want to have kind of exclusive or, or first access to this story. And then you can coordinate the publishing of, of their story with it going out on your own social channels as well. And just having a really good conversation with them about pushing that out there. Um, when you're talking to the journalists, make sure they tag or uh, link back to your social media channels so you can get um, a bit of growth um, in your followers from there as well. The fifth tip is working the system. So all this can sound a little bit, as I said at the start, can sound a little bit challenging. Where do I start? What do I do? Um, and look, our social media team is a team of three. We get 3,000 um, pieces of content a day. We're creating 10 stories across our channels every day. And we, given the size of our team and the resources available, we need to, we need to be smart about how we're doing, doing our work. So the first one is, you know, if you can't take a decent photo, find someone who can. I really feel like social media, particularly for small businesses, it's more about who you know rather than what you know. So Symbio is that great example of the zookeeper who had a bit of a side interest or a passion in capturing video and they just let that, that zookeeper go and start cap capturing that video and obviously the results were incredible. Um, it might be uh, an apprentice, it might be someone you know, working, working at the front desk who just has a real interest or a bit of an eye for taking good photos or video. Empower them, see what they come back with. You can put structures in place to make sure that things are being um, seen or approved or however you, might, however you might want to set that up before it goes out. But if it's not you who's able to do this, tr try and find someone who can. The second one is around video editing and sound. I'm certainly no expert at editing vi video and most people here probably aren't either. There is, there is help at hand. So there are a number of apps that help you stitch together images to create video. There's also a, a platform we use called Upwork, which is effectively a network of freelancers around the world. You can write a little brief. It can be as simple as, can you stitch together these images and put some um, royalty-free sound underneath my video? Uh, and they'll come back and, you know, people will bid to do the work. So, you know, for $30 or $40, you can get a, you can get a video pulled together pretty easily. That could be anything from creating video to touching up photos to copywriting. It's effectively a, you know, a, a network of experts who can be doing a lot of this work for you at a pretty reasonable cost. Know nothing about social, test and learn. So back to the point I made earlier, don't, don't be afraid to get in there. The best way to learn is to actually make mistakes and to get in there and do it, see what works with your, for your audience. I would you know, recommend just getting in there and, and doing it yourself if, if there's no one else who can, can help you in that space and you'll very quickly figure out what works and what doesn't and I can assure you that people will give you feedback as they always do in the, in the social space. The final point is if no one's sharing your story, if you can't get people to be telling you that, telling that story, make it easier for them. If you think about international travel, travellers, they probably don't have a data plan that allows them to be on their social media um, accounts the whole time. Give them free Wi-Fi, make it, make it obvious. When you give them the password free Wi-Fi, put your um, account handle in there so they can be tagging you in it. You know, have a hashtag that's simple to use. I speak to so many people who want their guests to use four different hashtags to make sure they're covering all their bases. Make sure it's as simple as possible for them and um, you know, you will, you will see that, that content coming through uh, and give them Wi-Fi and they'll actually be able to do it. They might spend a little longer than you'd like on, on your Wi-Fi checking, you know, checking what's going on back home, but it gives you a real opportunity to encourage people to, to, share, to share and talk about your business. Just want to talk to you more broadly about working with Tourism Australia. So for those of you who don't know, Tourism Australia's vision is to make Australia the most desirable, memorable destination on earth. Um, with our core values being positive, genuine, innovative, commercial and united. Our marketing framework um, is as follows. Um, our key pillars are food and wine, aquatic and coastal and nature and wildlife. When you look at the Great Ocean Road example, um, you know, it ticks all of those boxes. Um, it's right for us to be, to be sharing um, your stories, particularly on social media. Um, underpinning those key lead pillars, we have support pillars which are business events, Indigenous, luxury, premium, and youth. So again, we're really focusing on those key areas when telling our stories and when talking to international visitors. They're really our focus for Tourism Australia.
Um, I mentioned the content we receive and the content we repost across our social channels. I have a quick video um, that just explains how that's done um, and then we'll turn over to questions. When the world looks to Australia, there are no dark skies, rush hour traffic or grey faceless crowds. No, when they look at us, they see this. And it's all thanks to you at Jewel Z and you at Colin Davis Photography. You make our great country even greater by sharing it with the world. Yes, at Quinton Chester, your beautiful little picture of this beautiful little fella definitely counts. And if you don't believe us, count the numbers. So, hands on smartphones, people. Here's how you get involved. Get out and take photos and videos. We love animals, scenery, yummy food, water, animals that live in the water, more scenery, and, well, all this kind of stuff. To help out, post directly to Tourism Australia's Facebook page. Use hashtag See Australia or the Ad Australia tag on Instagram. Or tweet anything you love with Ad Australia. Tourism Australia will feature the best daily. Because the more people that get to see your great stuff, the more people will fall in love with our great home. So go forth and share Australia. Australia. Uh, more broadly, um, we also have a huge number of resources for industry um, at tourism.australia.com. Um, so that has a little bit on social media, but there are a huge number of resources. Um, if you haven't checked it out, it um, could be very helpful. Um, we also have an essentials newsletter, which um, talks about what's going on in the Australian tourism industry, um, which comes out weekly, um, which you can subscribe to through that, um, through that uh, webpage. Highly recommend you get involved. Um, Christy from our industry relations team is also here today, so um, if you see her um, during morning tea or lunch, please come and introduce yourself. We'd love to have a chat and meet you. Um, and you know, certainly if you have any specific questions about um, social media, I'd be more than happy to have a chat um, and, you know, and, and see what you guys are up to. I'd love to see um, what you're working on. Um, there are my details. There is a dot between tourism and Australia there if you can't see it. But if you guys think you've got a great story, um, some great, great imagery, please get in touch and um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Well, look, I think the first, the first point you make about um, where do I start, where is it heading, there's always new, th new things popping up. Um, I think really if you are just starting out, focus, you know, you'll hear about Snapchat, you'll hear about all sorts of different formats, focus on one or two platforms and get them right. Um, there's no point having um, a presence across every single social media um, network uh, and, and, and then kind of doing a, doing a pretty average job across all of them. I'd really focus on, you know, making sure you're figuring out what your audience on Facebook is interested in or what your audience on Instagram is really interested in. And then as you, as you develop and grow and start seeing those business results, you can start to move into other platforms. Um, where is it heading? Um, good question. Um, certainly, you know, video is where it's at right now and there'll continue to be um, new formats coming through. If you look at what Facebook, Google are investing at the moment, um, you know, virtual reality is, is um, where they're spending a lot of money. Now, it's probably not mainstream at the moment, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in two or three years' time it really, really gets to that point. So um, I would say that that's probably where, where they're going to be fighting, um, fighting for attention next. Um, and obviously, we need the devices to make it really easy for consumers um, to access. Um, but right now, probably focus on getting the basics right um, on those platforms. Um, and, and I would say if, you, if you're doing a good job already on those social platforms, but you aren't, aren't necessarily spending, spending money through the ad platform, have a little dabble with it. You can set your limit at $20 and, and see who you're reaching and how many people you're reaching and, and whether you're able to drive click-throughs to the website or whether you're seeing increased visitation. Um, it does sound a bit daunting and you get onto the platform uh, and realise it's actually drop-down boxes, really straightforward. Um, just make sure you set your budget limit to uh, campaign life rather than per day because I've seen some people make that mistake before. So, the destination and region. Yeah, so um, we have some guidelines, um, some really practical guidelines on that website, um, tourism.australia.com. Um, 
that actually explain exactly what we're looking for um, to share on our social media channels. Um, I would expect the types of things that you're posting on your own business, um, business social media channels will be the types of things that we are looking to, looking to share or hopefully looking to share on, on, our own, on our own channels. So as I mentioned at the very start, you don't want to have really advertising led, overly polished um, content. The stuff that you're capturing on your smartphone, the, cap the stuff that your guests, the content that your guests are capturing on their smartphones is often the stuff that's going to resonate best with, with your audience and that's the stuff we're looking for. I would say focus on um, fostering your own audience and, and, and engagement on that audience, but start tagging you know, Great Ocean Road, visit Great Ocean Road, see Australia, um, so we're seeing that content come through so we can then pick that up and start sharing that across our channels. Um, and we are always looking for Great Ocean Road content. Um, you know, particularly in, particularly in winter, we're not seeing as much content come through from this part of the world. Obviously, there's a big spike of visitors in summer. So, you know, start tagging us in that content. We'll see it coming through. And we really want to have a good spread of, um, of destinations from across Australia featured on those platforms. So one of the things that we I think it's good to give some personality, um, you know, and, and show people what they can expect on um, when they come and visit you. It's one of the reasons we don't use really saturated images on our channels. We really want to make sure that what we're showing people on our social media channels is realistic, and and they know that when they see that image, that's what they're going to get if they if they arrive at that destination. Um, it goes back to the test and learn. Um, some some accounts are doing a great job of having people in there. You know, if it was um, if it was cycling, you know, get a GoPro, strap it onto um, a helmet, and give people you know give people a, a bit of a sense of, of what's happening and and some of the commentary and banter that might be happening on that trip. You can you can splice into a video and really give people an ex uh, I guess a really good look at what they're going to get there. Um, some accounts you put people in there and you see your engagement fall away and it, again it comes back to not worrying about a post only having five likes when they normally get 20 or you know 500 when they normally get 20,000 whatever it may be start to figure out what what's resonating um, and I'd say always have a bit of a business goal in mind particularly on Facebook where there are so many different formats if you want to be driving people to the website where there's you know where they're booking use a link post um, on your Facebook page choose a really bright colorful image um, make sure the headline, when you're building that page, it's going to get pulled through to Facebook, um, grabs people's attention, they know what they're going to get, um, and, and, and think about your metrics and, and what success looks like based on um, what that business objective is. If you're optimising to link clicks, they're clicking off the platform, you're less likely to have likes. Um, people might think, oh, you've only got 20 likes on that post. Looking at the back end, you might have had 100 visits to your website. So, um, you know, don't, don't get too worried about, you know, all of those, all of those vanity metrics. Um, think about what's working for your business and, and see what's working.